Hello, and welcome to the Sunday Night CG Spectrum stream. Uh, I will be your streamer today, Brian Bentley. I am the current head of modeling uh, at, uh, at CG Spectrum. Um, if, you, uh, if you've been tuning in, um, last week I was working on this little guy named Cortex from the Palindrome book by Creature Box. They are super, super awesome. And the challenge to this character, if you look at all the characters in here, right? The challenge of this character is it's, uh, it's a silhouette, right? When we talk about design, when we talk about character design, we talk about any design, even in animation, we talk about silhouette. And so these guys over at CreatureBox.com, um, I have a ton of their books. They're amazing. I highly suggest you go and, uh, and check it out. Um, they have this book, and it's called Paladrome Robot Display, and they've taken this idea of silhouette as the most important thing to, like, the nth, nth degree. So all the robot designs in here are just uh, silhouettes, some more complicated than the others. And uh, if you tuned in for the uh, Insanely Twisted Rabbit, that's kind of the thing that I'm doing now. I'm just kind of finding, you know, artists that I like, designers that I like, and, you know, uh, building uh, these kind of like 2D things into 3D things. Um, yeah, so uh, it took a little bit longer than I expected uh, last time. So I've, I've done a little bit of work in between... Uh, um, in between the streams, just kind of like tinkering over the week. And, uh, yeah, um, so a couple of people have been asking, and uh, Kashal just asked, um, they were like, oh, why don't you do this in Maya? And I was like, I could do it in Maya, um, but, like, I wouldn't learn anything. Um, especially when I'm doing stuff like this, I always want to learn something. And, like, I don't really do, uh, like, hard surface stuff in ZBrush. Mostly I do organic forms in ZBrush. So I kind of wanted to push myself and, you know, show you guys kind of the, the, the process of how you would possibly do a, uh, a, a, a mechanical uh, hard surface concept in ZBrush. So now, so uh, the other thing that I've been getting questions on, and these are all great questions, is um, some of the techniques that I'm doing look very close to traditional polygon modeling. And they kind of are, but they're not. Like this is still very, very much a concept sculpt, right? Even if I wanted to put this, this thing into production, I would probably eventually put it into Maya retopologize everything by hand make sure my edge loops are perfect make sure my uvs are perfect but at this point like this is kind of like an ideation phase um i just wanted to get it to look good really that's all i want i wanted to get it to look good so any technique that i can use to get it to look good is you know is the technique i i will use um so yeah so a couple things i did in between the streams uh i cleaned up some of this headpiece here. So if I press Shift F and I hold down Alt, so I cleaned up some of this stuff. I still have some little jaggedy pieces in here, but like I said, it is a concept sculpt. Um, so I cleaned up these big panels. Okay, so I added some bevels here, and I cleaned up. I made these a little bit, a little bit uh, softer overall. Um, I did some detailing on the body, so I split up the body into different parts. So if we look at our body here, I gave him a, like a neck. So if I solo this, right, I gave him a neck in there. Um, he's got these shoulder bits. And uh, so they've got this main body piece here with some bevels on it. So let's uh, frame that in. So let's put some quick bevels on here and uh, just these kind of extra pieces. So these pieces, I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with just yet. Uh, I'll figure out what I want to do with those, and then kind of like these side pieces. And I'm just kind of trying to keep the feel of of what's going on in here. Kind of, he's got kind of got. So this is probably going to be the biggest departure from from the uh, from the concept because this is very gooey. Um, so I'm trying to trying to get it to be somewhat mechanically sound, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I have like this this piece here. So that was big. Um, Pretty much, and that's that's mostly what I did. So a lot of my work was on the leg here. 
Um, the how to do the retopology? Yeah, I can show, and I probably won't get it to get to retopology in 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 this week. But uh, if you guys are interested, I'll keep going with this character and maybe take it to you know to fruition and maybe you know put it in a render and do some lighting and rendering if you know if you're if you're interested in that. So most of the work I've been doing is on the leg um, because I find the legs really really interesting. He's got these huge feet and these little spindly legs. So I'm trying to get I really am trying to get that look. So that's, for me, the, there's like three big things with this character. It's like this big brain dome piece, which I'm going to get to. Um, you have these these uh, kind of like, uh, almost like radiator coil arms, and then you have these big feet. So that's what, I was, that's what I've been focusing on. Um, so a couple techniques I've been using. I've been using a lot of the slice, trim, and uh, clip curves to get a lot of this done, and a lot of uh, a copious use of Z remesher. So um, if we look, so this is just a sphere in here that I just dropped in and put for for, uh, for a joint. Uh, this piece I did a, a fair bit of work on to try to get it down this low. There's still a little bit, um, let's see, let's go back to here. Yeah, there we go. There's still a little bit of wobble in here, but like I said, it's a concept sculpt. I just want to get this stuff into kind of like a usable, usable form. And then, uh, so I had this leg here as well. So I have poly groups on these caps, and I'll show you why I'm doing that in a minute. And then I have kind of like this piece that comes down. So uh, I think the next thing I'm going to work on, oh, and then I have my feet. So I've had, I got this guy here that I've cut up, uh, this guy here that's really low res, and this guy, this, this end piece. So it looks like I have some, uh, some uh, masking left here, and I'm just going to control W. Just make that all one poly group. I think that'll work. That's all good. Okay, so the next thing I think I'm going to work on is like this, because this is this is really undefined in here. Like where, like what, what's going on in here? So I imagine this to be kind of like a like one of those like rubber gasket things, right? And then it just kind of bends and turns a corner. So that's that's kind of what I'm thinking about all about that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, I'm just going to make a cylinder that's straight. Let me let me turn on my epic pen as well. I always like to have epic pen open. It's always nice to have something that you can just kind of randomly draw. And uh, so what I think I'm going to do is uh, here. So I think I'm going to have something that kind of looks like this. And then it makes kind of like this L shape into here. And it'll have like these ribs on it. Like that. Right, just some sort of ankle piece to kind of uh, merge this surface and this surface together. I think that's the idea that I'm going to go with. Yeah, so to do that, I'm gonna try to start as simply as I can, um, as I usually do, and I'm just—I think I'm just gonna start with a, a cylinder, and then I'll—I'll uh, I'll see if I can bend it into place. Now, like I said, I am—you know—learning, uh, just like not learning, but uh, trying to challenge myself. I'm trying to do—I'm trying to do just basically be what's called a zebrush cowboy, like try to do as much as I can in here. Like I said, normally I wouldn't do this type of work. Uh, in here, but like I said, want to challenge myself. So I'm going to append a cylinder. Do, 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 do. Yeah, cylinder. I'm going to alt click it so that I can see it. And uh, let me frame out. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this thing a little bit smaller. Like that. I think that's pretty good. And I'll just kind of start to move it into place like this. So what I, I think what I want to do is I want to put the ribbing on this before I actually bend it into place. So let's just put this here, and we'll put this ribbing on here now. And I think how I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that with, uh, I'm going to do that with the noisemaker. So I'm going to come back here. And I want it to make my poly groups on the top and the bottom of this. So I'm going to hold down Control and Shift, get that, Control W, Control and Shift, bring everything back. W. 
and then so I have the top and the bottom. So I have, hold on, show this guy like that. So now I have the top and the bottom. I'll do W, Control W. So my tops and my bottoms both have uh, polygroup. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crease these polygroups. So I think I need, I'm think I'm going to need a little bit more geometry in here. So what a crease allows me to do is allows me to smooth this thing without uh, moving these edges. So I'm gonna go to do, 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 geometry and I'm gonna say crease. I'm gonna say P, crease PG. And so I'll get like, these little extra dots here. So now I can do control D and those creases stay. So I'm gonna say delete lower and yeah. And then I'll say uncrease, no, I'll leave the crease there. I might need it later. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to make stripes along this thing, okay? And I'm going to use Noisemaker to do that. So first thing I want to do is I want to mask my caps. So I'm going to grab my caps and control and click and then unmask everything. So just my caps are masked. So now I'm going to go into my surface. Hello, good to see you guys, good to see you. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. no one's called me Professor Bentley in a really long time. Are you from SCAD? Uh, <laughs> uh, no one's called me Professor Bentley in months. That's crazy. Um, okay, so I'm going to do noise, and I want, I'm going to frame this up. So I don't want this regular noise, right? Um, and the reason I, ca I, I made those caps is so that I can mask that off. So this noise will only happen where I don't have any. So we generally think of noise as like this, like the speckly pattern, right? So I don't want that. I want, so if I do this on UV, yeah, let's do that like this. Okay, so I'm gonna do 3D and then I'm gonna do my noise plug. So my noise plug allows me to have these other shapes. I'm gonna lose in, so I'm gonna do stripes here. And I can kind of probably very vaguely see these so I'm going to say, okay. So this takes a little bit of, of doing. So I want my um, basic noise. I don't want any of that. So I'm going to say mix basic noise to zero. And then I'm going to start playing with my noise. Uh, my noise scale is going to be zero. Mix basic goes to zero. So my plug-in scale, I'm going to start to play with this until I can actually see it. So there's a stripe. I'm going to bring my strength way down. Okay, so there's a stripe. There we go. So now I have a good idea of where this plugin is going. I'm gonna go back to edit. And so now I can start to play with this. So I'm gonna say stripe width, I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna take my Z angle and I'm gonna start to rotate this. Oh, hey Marat, okay. Good to see you, good to see you. I hope your, your break is going well. Okay, so I'm gonna say okay. So now I have these stripes in here. I'm going to say, okay. So that's going to give me these stripes. And I think, actually, you know what? Looking at this, like, there's only, like, two big bubbles. So maybe go a little, make them a little bit bigger. Plug in scale. Yeah, yeah, I think that's good. So I'll say, okay. All right, so now I'm going to say mask my noise. So that will give me these lines. And so now I can just soften this maybe a little bit. Actually, no, I maybe not need to soften that. So I'm gonna go to deform. Where is it? Deformation, and I'm gonna squeeze those parts in. So I'm gonna say inflate, I'm gonna squeeze those parts in. So now I have this in and out and in and out and in and out. So if I divide this again, I get like this nice kind of gasket look. So now what I can do is let's unsolo this. So now we can start to put this thing in a place and actually kind of mush it around. So first thing I want to do is I want to get this bend in here. So I'm going to use one of the deformers for this. So I think I'm going to use uh, bend curve. Oh, I don't think I can use this if I have 
subdivision history. So I'm going to delete my subdivision history. I'm going to do big curve. There we go. Okay, so now I need to say I want my curve to go up and down. So let's just see. Let's see. Uh, that's smoothness. This is, and I'm looking down here, right here. So this is resolution. So that's how many points I have. This is smoothness. This is axis. So I want my y axis. So right now, it's on my x axis. So that's going to be y. There we go. And I want, uh, let's see. I want four. Okay, so now I can take this guy and start to bend him over like that, and this guy can come over like that. It's a really nice way to, and then move that detail around. So, like I said, this is some of this stuff is very uh, similar to to uh, traditional modeling. And this is the fun part. I like actually, once you have everything set up, you can really start to kind of mush stuff around and get it to look exactly how you want it to. I'm liking that, I'm liking that. Put this in a little bit. Fold that up a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go click my gear again and go back to my Gizmo 3D and that will confirm that. So now let's go back. So I'm gonna do BMV and just start to pull this down and around a little bit. And I can pull these parts inwards. So it looks just a little bit more organic. It doesn't look like this perfect little tube. So now I kind of have, it looks kind of look like a, like a little sock that he's wearing, which I think looks cool. Okay, and then now that I have that, now I can go back to my, uh, my standard brush and start to add in some more detail in here. So B, S, uh, where's one? Da, 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 da. Let's see. B, S, should be up top, standard. So I'll make this a little bit smaller. And we can pull that out. Hope everybody's having a having a good weekend so far. Had a good weekend. It's a public holiday here in Hong Kong, so I got the day Thursday and Friday off. Uh, spent the day today with some friends on a sailboat. It's good life. It's good life. So for those of you who don't know, I am currently based in uh, in Hong Kong right now. So that's the cool thing about CG Spectrum. I get to work with super talented people from all over the world. It's a good gig. Just kind of chill some of that stuff out. Sometimes it's, it's nice to just sculpt stuff out. Sometimes you just get bogged down with all that technical stuff. It's really fun just to get in there and start sculpting. Yeah, I'm liking how that's looking. I'm really liking how that's looking. So it's a little bit bulky, bulkier than what's going on in here. So let's uh, let's kind of chill that out a little bit. B, B M V for move. Just a little bit bigger. Let's kind of scoot this down just a little bit. Okay. 
Cool. So the great thing about having this uh, this uh, this poly group up here is I might might be able to use my uh... actually you know what I think I'll go go ahead and uh, and bevel this so I can bevel this to get this little curve on the on the bottom here. So let's go to geometry and we'll go to do, 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 bevel. And what it'll do it should yeah it'll bevel on the creases. So I can bevel this down a little bit. I give this a resolution of two. Yeah, so that gives it a nice little kind of like crease there. And then the other thing is I kind of want to put a uh, a lip around this. So let's see if this might be pushing the Z modeler because Z modeler really doesn't like having a lot of geometry like this. But we'll see what he can do. So let's do B Z M. I'm gonna hover over a face, and I'm gonna do inset with my whole poly group. So let's just see if this will this will cooperate. Oh yeah, there we go. Great, that's feeling good. And then now what I'll do is I'll extrude this inward. So I'm gonna do Q mesh and I'll push this in, push that whole thing down. And actually what I think I'll do is, I'm just gonna delete that guy. So I'm gonna click this it again and I say edit Let's see uh, modify geometry delete hidden and then I'll just fill that in with some better polygons I'm gonna go to my edge closer so I'm gonna say edge I'm gonna say close and I'm gonna say convex hull so that usually gives you a pretty nice so I don't want these alternating uh, you uh, polygroups, polygroups. So let's see, go back to my edge, convex hole, spline. I want polygroup flat. So that should just give me, yeah, one big polygroup in the middle there. So now I should be able to do a better inset in here. Or I can do, I can make this a polygroup. And I can do poly loop. I can do that guy. There we go. Okay, so uh, I'll come in here and I think I'll just do, I'll do another inset. That's probably the easiest way. Inset, poly group all, pull that in. Cool. So now when I do this Q mesh, this should give me a better look. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to go Q mesh. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to do uh, extrude. There we go. And that'll be polygroup all. That should be, yep, polygroup all. And I'll just pull this down. There we go. And then I can do my edge and I can bevel that. So this looks like traditional modeling, but it's really not. It's it's whatever uh, ZBrush kind of feels like doing. It's it's really hard to control. So uh, it's not hard to control, but it's 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 a little bit more difficult to, to control than than traditional poly modeling. But if you're in a pinch and you don't want to send stuff all the way back out and bring stuff all the way back in, it's it's an option. So what I want to do is actually I want to inflate this edge. So B I. Um, is my inflate. Let's move this down here. B I inflate and I'm just gonna hit the edge of this. Let's turn this back off. Yeah, so I'm just gonna inflate the edge of this sock a little bit. So just so it doesn't look so uniform. Because this is like one of the more kind of uh, kind of organic looking parts of this guy. So it makes a nice, uh, it makes a nice contrast to the rest of the design. You know, this like this little kind of like wobbly piece on the leg. Do 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 do. 
So I'm gonna go BMV, go back to my move brush, and just kind of push that. So it sits close to the leg. heel to kind of touch the ground a bit. Yeah, yeah, I'm liking I'm liking how that, that, that turned out. It's quite nice. And maybe just to kind of get rid of some of this, maybe I'll just chuck a clay polish on it, see what that does. Oh yeah. So I'm just looking at my silhouette up here and I'm comparing it to my silhouette down here and I'm thinking, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm liking where this is going. This is nice. This is good. So let me save this. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this, I'm going to call this the sock. Let's uh, rename. Sock. And I'm going to put that in with my leg here. Okay. All right, so that's one thing done that we that we have. Uh, one of the other things is if I look at the geometry for this guy, like this stuff looks pretty good. Um, this is kind of bonkers. So I'm going to do that same um, filling in here with that Z modeler brush. So do 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 do. Let's see. So I'm going to control and shift. Quick, quick. I'm going to say uh, do, do, do. geometry. And then say modify, delete hidden. So I'm gonna go back to my Z modeler brush and look at my edge, and we're gonna say fill, or actually it's close. I keep saying fill, and we'll keep that the same. So that, and we'll do. Oh, let's do circle. Yeah, that's good. So the other thing I can do, so if this pops out a little bit, I can just clip, clip this back. So I'm gonna do clip curve. So I can just do clip rect as well. So just clip that back. Oops. Hold down Alt. And just clip that. Ah, do my clip curve. Clip curve. It's easier. So I want the gray, because I know with my clip curve, whatever is on the gray line is going to get smashed down. There we go. And if you see it made the poly group, if it does that, when you turn on your clip curve, you can right click and you can set turn off poly group. So let's do that. So there we go. So that's all nice and flat, that's all nice and flat. And we have better topology in the center there. So BMV, if I wanted to move just that little middle guy, do that. make that a little bit more central. Not necessary, but um, always a good idea to be um, organized. Okay, so let's see, let's go back up. My sock, there we go. All right, um, let's see, what do I want to do next? What do I want to do next? I think I want to try to place this thing in its body. So I have the, like, these little slats here that I think I'm going to deform upwards. So what I'm thinking is, let's go back to my epic pen here. What I'm thinking is that ball socket is going to go somewhere like right here. Right, and then this guy I think is gonna have to come out and around like a lip, and then this guy on the inside 
is going to do something like that. Right, so it's just it's like I'm basically pushing everything up. So I think that's what's going to happen. Um, and it'll look close to this. It'll look a little bit close to that. So one thing I think I do want to do for now is on this, I want to get rid of... Um, no, I can leave that. I can leave that thickness in there. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have my leg and my foot kind of split out. So I'm, first thing I think I'm going to do is I'm going to place my leg and then I'll put my foot where my leg, where I think my leg should be. Hello, Shubham Mina? Hi, how are you? Um, I'm still terrible at chat with this guy, so I'm still, like, uh, I'm so, I'm so caught up in my own little world. Um, okay, so with the leg, I'm going to click this little gear here. I'm going to say transpose set, and you can see everything else is going to go gray, and what that's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to put my leg in place. Oh, my leg is still all one thing, so let's go back. I want to split out my uh, my foot. So my foot is still within my leg, so I think my the start of my foot is here. Yeah. And then this is the socket, so I think the socket should go all the way up the top. So it's socket, um, upper leg, lower leg, sock. And then there's the foot. So for the foot, I'm going to split that out into its own group, so I'm gonna, or, or its own folder. So I'm going to say new folder. I'll call this foot. And I think by default, ZBrush, because you know the folders are new to me. <laughs> they just came around like maybe 2019 or something like that. So um, there's a learning curve for everybody. So yeah, what it does is that if you put make a new folder, it takes everything else under that and shows it into a new folder. So if I do now. Transpose set. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this guy over. I'll move him up. I'm going to hold down Alt so I can move my pivot. And put that in the right spot. Okay, so I'll move this into the body a little bit more. So it looks like I'm gonna have to do a lot of movement in there to get that to look right. So let's rotate this out. And I'm trying to match the angle of what's going on in, so if we, when we're looking at them straight on, we can see a little bit of this inside. So I also wanna see a little bit of this inside here not too much okay so that's that so now I need to bring I think I need to bring this forward a bit so he's got like a I want him to look balanced so my ankle should be like right underneath this 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 ball so here let's see all right cool I think I, I think I like where this is so I'm gonna have to start working on this individually now so I'm gonna go back to my draw and actually before I do anything else, I'm going to save this. Because this is a big kind of destructive thing that I'm about to do. Uh, we'll do... Actually, what I'll do is... I wonder if I can... Yeah, I'm just going to duplicate this whole folder. Select a folder and so tools will be duplicated. Press OK to continue. Yes. Okay. So, now I have two foots. Feet. Right? So, this one, I'm going to rename to this folder, say, rename folder. I'm gonna cut, say foot backup. So that's gonna be my backup foot. I'm gonna hide that one. And so this one, then I'll work on this one. So yeah, transpose set. Um, Actually, I don't want a foot backup. I want a leg backup. Where's my leg? I'll just do two, right? So I'll have my leg. Uh, we'll say 
duplicate. So now I should have two leg folders, and this one, I'll rename this, I'll call this leg backup as well. So I have these backups. So it's my foot backup. I'm going to pull this all the way down to the bottom. My leg backup, I'm going to pull that all the way down to the bottom. So we'll hide both of those. OK, so now we can do our leg. So let's do transpose set. There we go. So do, 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 do what I did before. We'll take this out. Just trying to fit that front leg in this into this as much as I can. So this part, this whole part, is going to have to kind of like flare out like that. So we'll we'll get to that in a minute. Um, and then what's the last thing I did? Oh yeah, I rotated this out a little bit so we could see the side of the leg like that. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my draw. So now I'm going to go to this guy. And because these two, I want them to move together, I think I'm just going to merge them together real quick. So I'm just going to do merge, merge down. So yeah, so now I can see everything. Okay, so, and so this is the other reason why I put this kind of configuration in here. So if I go to my move, and I do, and I do alt and click, it'll move my gizmo to that plane, which is really handy. So... I think I need to move the entire leg forward. Transpose set. Yeah. So I want to move this forward a bit. Then I'm gonna come to this guy, and I'll put do Alt. I'll do Alt and click here, so that'll give me that. So now I can rotate this guy backwards. Let's turn off transpose all. We'll rotate this back. Yeah, and then so for my foot. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say transpose set. And we'll move this guy over and up. And then I will have to... Actually, that sock is actually working pretty well the way it is. Kind of like that. So generally, your foot tracks out with your knee. So I'm going to do that as well. So I'm going to have this foot kind of be parallel with that knee as well. Kind of scoot this in. Oh, hey, Rico. How you doing, man? What you been up to? So I'm just kind of fiddling with this back and forth, just trying to get the right look here. So let's go back to draw. And yeah, yeah, I'm liking that. I'm liking this configuration. Like, this looks good. Like, it feels kind of like this. Now, he's, he feels a little bit more squat. Like, these feel, like, this part feels way, way longer um, overall. But I think I, think, I think I got kind of like the overall feel of it. Like, I feel like this part is longer and this part is shorter. But I think it's good enough. Good enough for government work. All right, so the next thing is I want to uh, start to deform this. Now, I'm, if I believe that, yeah, I, I separated these guys and these guys. So I'll just go ahead and move those back together. So let's go. That's in our body. And uh, let's see here. That's this guy. So this one should be here. 
Yeah, so this one, I'll just do merge down. Great. All right, so now I can go to my move and kind of fit, start to fit this stuff in as well. So I'm going to do pretty big brush size and try to fit that leg socket into there. And this is kind of like the beauty, not kind of like, this is the beauty of, of working with um, much lower poly density in, in ZBrush, is you can make these really big sweeping movements and you're not gonna get a lot of, of lumpiness. This is already starting to look really good. I'm liking where this is going. This is kind of like a receiving hole for that, uh, that hip, that ball hip socket. I don't want it to look too loose. A bit of a balancing act. All right. So now I'm going to deal with these guys. So these guys are like internal stuff. So as long as it looks believable, that's all I really care about. So I just kind of want to cover that inside part and then I'll, I want to lift it up around. around the ball. Okay. So, so I think what I'm gonna have to do, so a lot of my robot is getting in the way here. So I'm gonna solo this. So I'm gonna hold down shift, click, and then I'm gonna start bringing back all the parts of my leg. Do this. Ah, that one. there we go. Just need to find the right one. Okay, so this is going to be quite large. So I'm going to say. Just want to lift this over that that ball socket The crazy thing about this is I'm doing most of this with a mouse. Like I'm not even I haven't really even touched my my tablet very much in this this uh this session. Yeah, so I think that that fills in enough. So look at this. All I want is a little bit of infill, like if we get a lower angle shot on this guy. Most of that should also be in shadow. So I just want something in there to make it look like there's some sort of complexity going on. I'm just kind of going and giving a bigger once over to the, the overall form. Yeah, I think that's good. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like that. He's kind of got, like, that mushroom shape that this guy has now. He's a little bit more spherical. This guy's got a little bit more mushroom to him. Um, maybe, I think, he's feeling, like, a little bit flat now. Mostly because I'm going off of a very flat, you know, concept. So, maybe I'll pull this down a little bit. Maybe I'll pull this. So, I'm just trying to find some, some more curved shapes. Maybe make his back a little bit more flat. So, it's not so round. Yeah. Alright, cool. I think I like that. Yeah, cool. So, uh, yeah, All right. So now, what I'll do, what do I want to do now? I think I'm going to leave this leg as it is. Um, because I'm going to come back to it and do a little bit more to it. So I don't really want to really want to mirror it over, over just yet. And this is the kind of like the hard part of doing stuff like this. It's like, when do you kind of do your final, final run in and, uh, and, uh, and kind of start finalizing everything. Okay. The next part is going to be this guy right so this guy this arm piece here is kind of a mess because <laughs> i just kind of slapped it together and um so let's take a look at this so what i want is i want to do this other trick that i've been doing a lot a lot with this is using my poly groups to control my my zero mesher so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my move and i'm going to control and click on this guy so that will um, if you control and click on a poly group when you're your move tool, it'll uh, it'll mask everything else and move your gizmo. So if I do Alt and go to center, I can get that. So I want this to be a little bit longer, just so I have a little bit of room to work in here. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing I want to do is I I want a poly group out of this surface and a poly group out of this surface. So, for that, I'm going to use my, uh, I can either use clip or trim. So let's see if we can use clip and get a nice clean result. And if we can't do that, then we'll have to use trim. So I'm going to do clip curve. I'm going to right click and say poly group. Come in. And remember, I hit alt to change directions. Okay, so that's a little off. So I'm gonna have to go a little bit deeper. So I'm gonna go from the back side. And so it looks like I when I did my original clip, like I was at an angle. I was at a bit of an angle. So I'll we'll have to do this one. And actually I'm just gonna do a trim. I'll do I'll do a trim and then I'll do a clip. And I'll show you why I'm gonna do I have to do both. So I'm gonna do my trim and we'll see that we'll see the problem with doing a trim first. I want to keep as much of this as I can. So I'm alt, alt, alt. So when I do this trim, right, because this is a uh, a concave, yeah, a concave uh, surface, it's just kind of connecting this to this. So now, if I don't move anything, I can just do another clip, and it'll push that down. So it's not as precise as I would like, but it's better than nothing. Let me turn off all the group. And I'll clip that down. So now I have this poly group here. So I'm going to do that for the other part. So I'm going to go to uh, trim curve and I will trim that. So that chops off the bottom and then I'll chop off these parts as well. So that's why I brought these out. Um, if I wanted to, I could just bring this in like this and just chop off. Now, if I have something hidden and I try to use my trim, it just turns into a slice, which is very confusing. So 
that will trim and this should trim as well yeah there we go okay so now I have all my poly groups determined so I have a front group here a back group here a group here and a group here So if I want to keep these two pieces separate, I can just go ahead and uh, and z-remesh this. If I want to weld them together, I can uh, uh, dynamesh it first. So let's do a dynamesh and then a z-remesh, because I want to kind of uh, sculpt in some some softness along here. Um, so let's do do, do, do we'll do geometry. And we're going to do dynamesh. And I'm going to turn on keep my groups. So actually, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. So let's just do 1024. And uh, let's see what that gives us. Yeah, that's good. So it, it merged those two things together and it kept our, our poly groups. So for this, this housing. I want, um, and so to clean up some of this stuff, I can just keep uh, clipping this. So if I have like this kind of stuff here, I can clip this again, or I can trim this again. So I can do trim here, like that, and then trim again. Here. So I knew I was gonna wanna do this, so that's why I gave myself a little bit of, of of area to work with. The other thing is, is this is a little bit thicker now. Like this is really thin compared to the the, the concept. So I'm, I'm gonna grab that bottom part. And then I'm just gonna move it down a little bit. And I can do Alt and go to center. And maybe there's like a little curve here or this little line there. So I'm gonna make that come in a bit as well. Right, so it's not like a perfect sphere, okay. So now at this point, what I should be able to do is I can dynamesh this one more time, like that. And what I want to do is I want to have this and this part be all the same piece. So I'll do click, 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 oops, click there, and here. And I'll just do control W. So now that outside housing is all one, uh, is all one, uh, one piece. So. Now let's z uh, let's z remesh this and see what we get. So z remesher, <clears throat> I want let's see let's do two thousand, and I want to keep my groups and I don't want to polish them at all, and I want don't want adaptive. So z remesher. So this is a lot of complex geometry. So it is chewing through this. Quite slow, but we'll see what it gives us. Hopefully my computer won't crash. So that's not the greatest. <laughs> So let's uh, let's go back. Let's see what it's doing. It's having some trouble resolving this. So let's go back and let's undo this. And let's try to z remesh with this. So maybe it can try to keep this together and that together. And maybe we're going a little bit too low. So let's do. Let's go back to five. And maybe we can turn on adaptive. So this is this is my kind of like when I'm doing stuff like this. This is my 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 one of my biggest pet peeves about just using kind of like this this workflow is like I really don't have a lot of control over what this is doing like I'm just like kind of like maybe this and then hope for the best 
Um, so if it really doesn't work, I would probably take it into, once again, I would probably export this, take it into Maya, do a quad draw over it, and bring it back in. And I may very well have to do that. Which is fine. Yeah, that's still really terrible. Mm. That's unfortunate. So, one other thing I can do, let's go back. Let's go all the way back to before I dynameshed these two parts together. And ZBrush's undo history is is pretty pretty epic. Um, okay. So let's try to Z remesh just these pieces on their own. Keep groups. Yeah, that's a little bit better. That's actually a lot better. That's giving me a lot more predictable results. So I can merge these two. I can weld these th two things together at a later date. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. So maybe I can even do half. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So I just want to get this a little bit down to a little bit more controllable uh, geometry. Then that super thick mesh and that super thick mesh. Okay. Um, so I'm going to... Let's do this. I'm going to do a delete hidden. And I'm going to go back to my Z modeler brush and do these caps. So B, Z... Brush B, Z, Z modeler. Come to my edge. Yeah, so like that. And like that. Okay. So I have these nice even poly groups on the edge. Could even do that to that bottom one, but I think I'm probably gonna we're never really gonna see that because there's gonna be this big tube on here. So I'm not really worried too much about that. Right. Cool. All right. So we got our uh, the beginnings of our leg, our final leg, and uh, our final arm in here. So if I do, if I did come back to this, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my poly, my crease. I'm going to say crease PG. And so now, if I did want to smooth this and keep those creases, those creases will be kept, and I I get like a nice clean uh, clean um, division so let's go back I have a four okay um, let's see what else do I want to do all right so if you remember from the last time I had I started out sculpting my face um so I actually lost that geometry I have no idea what happened to it I think I had a crash um, Oh, it's going pretty good, Rushback99. How you doing, man? How you doing? Uh, just modeling a robot. <laughs> um, so what I so what I did is I actually went and I kind of box modeled like or as bo much box modeling as you can in ZBrush, and I kind of got to back to this shape. The other thing I did is I added like this little neck in here. So we'll deal with that in a minute as well. So I feel like I want to have a little bit more control over what this face is doing. So what I'm gonna do. Apparently, this is just turning into a into a into a Z modeler uh, <laughs> run through. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this front face because this is this is a really nice piece for this this thing here. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll do I'm going to go and I'll flip this. So I'm basically hidden the front. So I'm going to do split. So this is a really cool trick. I'm gonna do split hidden. So I'm gonna split out the front of that guy into its own poly group, or not poly group, but a uh, 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 subtool. Okay, so now I have this face. So this is the face and this is the back, right? So because this thing has its own undo history, I can just go back. And so now I have both. So I have that face and the original face. I'm not really sure why this one is scooted down though. No matter. I can just do move and just kind of scoot that back up. 
All right, so for my original one, I'm gonna hide this. I just wanna push this, uh, this guy back a little bit. So I wanna make some room. So I'm gonna do, let's see, I want to do, is it, would it be inflate? Yeah, maybe inflate on polygroup all, and I'm just gonna push this back in space just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So I just wanna push that guy back a little bit because I wanna make like a jaw, basically. I want this to be a separate piece. So I wanna make that like that. Okay, now to this guy, what I'll do is I'm gonna extrude him backwards. So we'll do extrude and pull that backwards like so. Now, when I pull things backwards in ZBrush, it makes them inside out. So I can uh, flip in their display properties. I can do flip. Here, so now I have this whole piece. So I'm gonna solo this. Because what I want to do is I want to make these cre these things crease really really well. So generally, and I want I want this to curve outwards a little bit. Uh, so I got kind of like a shredder mask. So generally, when you're when I'm trying to make nice even curves, I leave I have one to, I usually have th only three or four uh, divisions. So for this, I'm gonna do uh, delete and edge loop. So I'm gonna get rid of this guy. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh yeah, I have enough. So what I'll do for this, I think I'm gonna do a, is there a slide? Yeah, there's a slide, edge loop complete. So the slide will allow me to just kind of move these guys in place like this. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to make polygroups out of each one of these kind of panels. So then I can crease them, and then when I smooth them, everything will be good. So we'll start with, so let's see, we'll start with this part. I think I might have to put an edge loop in between here so I can get, yeah. There we go. So let's do double. So I want select rect, and this is kind of tedious, but actually I'm gonna do select last, so it's probably be easier. So I want these two pieces, I want them to be their own poly group, control W, and I want these pieces to be their own poly group. I want these pieces to be their own poly group. This will become apparent while I'm doing this, hopefully very soon. And then that's its own polygroup. All right. So for the front part, same thing. I want this to be its own polygroup. Sometimes there aren't auto magic solutions for things, sadly. So this guy. Okay, so polygroup here, polygroup here, polygroup everywhere. So now what I can do is I can start to sculpt this. So has a kind of roundness to the front of it. And 
And so the other thing is I'll run, I might be able to just run a the trim dynamic over this. B T and flatten that out. So I'm just gonna see what that gives me. Yeah. So it kind of takes out that bulge in the middle for those side pieces. And it's weird to be using this really high-end brush on this very, very simple geometry. But it'll it'll pay off. It'll pay off. Okay, so I'm gonna do uh, let's see. Well, geometry. I'm gonna crease my polygroups. And so now when I go to smooth this, I should get nice. Boom, there we go. Get these nice creases in here. Really like this. This looks really good. So let's unsolo this. So now, oh yeah, that's nice. That's really good. I like that a lot. That works really well. And I'm just gonna go forego like these little forky things. I really like how this turned out. Because now I can come back down and I have like this really low polygonal mesh that I can use to, so I can pull this around, B, M, V, so I can pull this to kind of match that curvature of the head. That is really, really nice. I keep on, I'm keeping, and this is why I really like Pure Ref, is I'm I'm constantly glancing over at at my um at my concept art to make sure that I'm staying on target. I really like how this is how this is hooking up to the this the cylinder now. I didn't really know how I was gonna I was gonna handle that. Yeah, yeah. I like how that, that, that interface is happening now. It makes sense. It makes more sense than what I did before. Okay, so I'll just grab this guy and I'll just kind of scoot him forward into that space. So I might even be able to smooth this a bit to give it... Just give it a little bit of character. Look like it's, a, it's actually a lip that goes into there. And under there. So let's pull this down. Maybe not that much. I just I really like that this this separation now of uh, separation on the face. And in fact, I kind of like this line here as well. It's actually working quite well. Do I have something? Yeah. Looks like it looked like I had something masked that shouldn't have been masked. So I'm just kind of getting some details to line up. And a lot of ZBrush work is this just kind of like fiddling. It's just kind of getting, just messing around. Not messing around, but like getting uh, getting these small details in the, sp in, the, in the place while you're at low res so that you can have fun when you're doing your high res. So let me solo this. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so I have like the basics it's starting to look like a predator. That's really cool. So let's see what my polygroups look like. Okay, this is this isn't too bad. I can work with this. I can work with this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do how I did the foot. Also, I'll show you how I did the foot, and this is actually working really well. So let's do. I'm just going to do this, and I'm going to. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to do this traditionally sculpting. I'm just going to traditionally sculpt this out. 
to get those panels. So I can show you how you can go up to high res, get your panels, and then go back down to low res. Um, so this, ah, yeah, this will be this will be cool. So I'm gonna divide this, and I'm gonna turn on my uh, damn standard BDS. And I'm going to turn on Sculpers. So we're going to go back to Sculpers. So I want some pretty sharp curves in here. So I'm going to come. Do I have? Oh, I have subdivision levels. So delete lower. A lot of this high order stuff you need. You can't have subdivisions. So I'm going to start out just drawing in these panel lines with my standard brush. I can always say people sleep on the standard brush a lot and it goes a really long way if you know how to use it. down like this. I'm just going to follow. Follow that piece of geometry as we're looking at it. Feels pretty good. Okay, let's slow this back. And I'll make the rest of these kind of gesture lines. So here. Kind of have this rounded square at the bottom. We're going to go here. Right. Cool. So, and oh, uh, I also want to this is this almost is starting to start kind of start to look like welding lines, which is actually pretty cool. All right. So, I have this geometry and so it's still really low res. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and dynamesh this so I get a little bit more data out of that. So I'm getting like this, why I'm getting like these chunks. I'm going from really low res to super high res. So let's go dynamesh and we'll do 512. Nope. And dynamesh. And yeah, so now I'm getting some decent topology and so now I can start to use my old friends uh, trim dynamic and uh, high polish B let's do let's try high polish first and once again if you're gonna go with a big brush size on high polish you need to turn off you need to turn off uh, sculpturous because with a with a large brush size the high polish is not going to give you like this nice smooth look it's going to give you really tessellated geometry because that's what Sculptress Pro does. If you have a big, if you have a big brush, it's going to tessellate your mesh downwards, and if you have a small brush, it's going to tessellate your your mesh inwards. So if you want to do like kind of like these big sweeping, smoothing actions, make sure you turn off Sculptress Pro. I just find it really cool that you can just make these these ridiculously sharp features in a in a in a uh, in a uh, organic sculpting package. So let's slow down a little bit, just a little bit. do this part as well. So I'll be a little heavy handed on the back of this. I really want 
want to flatten that out. I think most of this is going to be uh, hidden underneath the head, the headpiece. But I want to give it a little bit of love just to make sure. And you can tell uh, it's it's most people and uh, like I'm like a lot of people like you could tell when I really start to hit that groove and the sculpting I kind of forget to talk, um, so it could be it can it can get kind of boring sometimes and if I'm not talking you know shoot me a line and be like hey say something and uh, I'll uh, I'll try to expound upon what I'm doing a bit more overall so I'm just trying to get these cut lines in here for this face piece. Oh yeah, that's looking. I'm liking this. I'm liking this. So I, I, I think I want to exaggerate. Uh, I want to exaggerate this piece here. Exaggerate these lines. So I'm gonna go back to my B and standard, and I'm gonna Alt and just kind of pull those edges out a bit more. really kind of accentuate that and this one's a little tricky because like where is this because I want to make this lip here but where does that go so let's push in here and see where that takes us so now at this point this is this is a good candidate to use uh, to use sculptors because I want these really really fine details in here on this so. so here if we look at this it's generated all this nice new geometry for me so let's bring this down And at this point, this is a lot like, this is just like drawing skill. Like how steady is your hand in mine is generally not. So I'm gonna go back to my trim dynamic and I'm gonna turn off Sculptress. So I wanna use a bigger brush. I'm just gonna trim this edge down where I made that extra cut line there. It's oddly looking, it's looking so much like a Predator helmet now which I'm okay with because I love that movie, love that series. Getting these edges nice and crisp, trying to get rid of that little bulge, that little pucker. And here, for with my trim dynamic, I'm gonna pull. I'm holding down Alt to kind of fill in that little puck, that little dent I had in there, and then I'll I'll knock it back down. So I'm probably going a little ham on this, uh, probably because this is uh, most of this is gonna be behind that that face plate or the, the bottom lip plate thing. So uh, let's do mask lasso. And I'm gonna lasso off this part here. And I'll trim this down. Yep. 
So I'm gonna go back to my brush high polish. Make this bigger. Maybe not that big. Just kind of polish this stuff down. So what's really cool about this is in a relatively short amount of time, I've been able to make like a pseudo kind of hard surface thing that's not completely hard surface, but it's not completely, you know, uh, it's not completely uh, organic either. So yeah, oh yeah, I'm really liking that. Really, really liking that. So I think what I want to do is I'm going to have to pull this forward a bit to match up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this guy. So I'm going to shift click and then I'll just bring this guy back. So B M V. And I'm still at pretty relatively low uh, poly count here. This is this piece. I mean, it's, it's a really small piece to be this heavy it's about 200,000 but generally like you can go up to these millions and millions of polygons but you generally don't have to like you can get away with you know a couple hundred thousand um, now this is a pretty small piece so I'm not super worried about it but you don't have to go up into the six million I've seen students with you know millions and millions of polygons and their 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 sculpt doesn't look any better than a student with you know a couple hundred thousand so especially stuff like this um, you want to when you're doing hard surface stuff you kind of want to stay as 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 uh, as low poly as possible for as long as possible because that gives you the most control over your mesh This is really starting to come along. I think I like, I really like this face, this face piece. I was struggling with it. I was struggling with it a lot, trying to get it to, to kind of do what I wanted it to do. And I'm actually really happy with where this is now. Just trying to get this piece to fit in with the rest of the work that I've done. And is this tedious? Yes, <laughs> it's totally tedious. Um, that's, that's, you know, that's modeling. That's just how it goes. Okay. So I'm gonna duplicate this thing. And what I'm gonna to try to do is I'm gonna to try to get this into a lower resolution mesh. Uh, let's do, so this is my overall shape. I think I need to polish out, like this middle part needs to be a little bit flatter. It's a little, I got a little wobbly. And actually, you know what? No, that's fine, that's fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make I'm going to draw in my, my poly groups. I wonder if I can use poly group it for this. Let's try to use poly group it for this. I think this, that'll be a great idea. All right. So I'm going to use, I'm going to try to use be poly group it for this. So I'm going to open my side dock here, drop this. So what poly group it allows me to do is just draw my poly groups. And then, so let me save this because I'm going to do something a little crazy. Let's do cortex three. So I'm really happy with that. That new that new mouthpiece looks way better than the old one. Okay, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna fill this object with white paint. So I'm gonna go to color and fill object. And you can see over here the little paintbrush turns on. So now I'm gonna go to my B. I'm gonna go to my paintbrush. Let's try to move this over here. I'm just gonna move that over to my B P paint. Okay, so there's my paintbrush, so I can paint whatever color I want. So if I press V, so I can paint black on this now. So what I want is I'm going to do a focal shift, a really tight focal shift, and a really small brush size. Like that. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I will turn on Sculpress, so I can always get a perfect line there. So I can make this really, really small. Yeah, 
cool. And then I'm going to turn up my lazy brush, my lazy mouse. Lazy mouse, let's do radius of three. Oh, and the other thing I want to do is I want to turn off my pressure sensitivity. So on my tablet pressure, I'm going to say uh, RGB intensity and just bring that all the way up to the top. a little bit bigger. All right, so now I'm just going to start drawing my polygroups in. So RGB intensity is uh, 100. Draw size. Okay, there we go. Nope, it's still too big. And so I'm going to draw in here. So that's one. Go down to here. Now this is the tricky part. And I've never really done anything this complex with polygroup it, so we'll see if it can hold together. So, like, once again, with any kind of automated process, I cannot stress enough that this is not retopology. This is not retopology at all. It is generating new geometry for your sculpting process. So I always say real retopology generally doesn't happen in Houdini. Or sorry, it doesn't happen in uh, ZBrush. Usually it happens in Maya or Houdini or 3D Coat or some other some other designated software. Topple gun even, you could even say. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, do I want to? Yeah, we'll just see if this works. We'll see what this does. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this. Just keep a copy of it. Okay, and let's hide this and hide that. And let's run polygroup it. So I'm going to grab, go to Z. Plugins, drag this over here, and polygroup it, and I'm sorry, from polypaint. And I'll let this chew for a minute. Uh, what are you animating, Rushback99? Okay, that seems to be done. And let's look at our polygroups. Oh, there we go. Let's uh, turn off our polypaint. So there, that made us these nice polygroups. So if we look there, that's a polygroup. Really, that that's amazing. That, I think that's that's like nothing short of of magical. So now, what I can do is I'm going to polish these edges because they're a little jaggedy, and then I'm going to remesh and see what this remesh or this Z remesher is going to look like with kind of like the super complex geometry. So we'll see what we get. So first thing I'm going to do is come down to deformation and I'm going to do polish by features. We should see those edges just kind of chill out. All right, so that's feeling good. So let's Z remesh this and see what we get. could turn to complete and utter garbage. I've been relying on Z remesher way too much. So keep groups and let's see what we get out of the default. Not bad. I I will take this. I'll take it. This looks great. That's great, awesome. So now what I'll do is uh, let's do. I'm gonna crease all this. Crease polygroups. Yeah. 
yeah, cool. Great, so now I have my poly groups. So now, I'm turn go back to my brush high polish, and I can bring these in to alignment. So. Oh, yeah, it just disabled my sculptors. A little warning up there. So I can kind of come in here, start to smooth this stuff out. I'm not super worried about the back because that will all be hidden by the helmet. So now it's turned out really well. Nice. So let's un so that. And I have those other guys left over so we can get rid of those as well. So that's, I think, this one. So I'm on this guy, viewing that guy. That's beautiful. Back in there. Might even be able to pull that down just a little bit to kind of have like this big area in here. Actually, no, I, th I think that's okay. Really start to just pull this over, fill in that gap. Wow, already an hour and a half in. Mm. Time really, really flies when you hit flow. It's a great thing. It's a great thing to experience. Cool, that's really nice. It's really, really nice. So I can come all the way back down to my lowest subdivision level. For now, how many do I have? That might be. Ah, that's the one I want. I want to get rid of this one. Delete. So I'm left with my nice clean one. I may have to go back and resculpt those parts. Do do do. Uh, thank you, Rohan Roy. Like I said, this type of stuff, I usually don't do this in ZBrush. And I really just, I just want to get better. That's all I want. And that's what any, all anybody should want. I'm, I'm trying to, just like all you guys, I'm trying to compare myself to other people less and myself more. It's the overarching. That's the overarching thing. Great, awesome. So, that that worked out really, really well. Yeah, that's nice. I really like this look now. Like this is looking much more controlled than it did, and it fits way better to the overall design that this kind of guy, this guy, fits right, right in there. Okay, so let's give this guy some eyes. I think that's to the point where I can give him, give him some eyes. And like I said before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have them hang down. In, in this little area here. So his eyes are like these half cylinders. So I'm gonna start, once again, I'm gonna do an append. Uh, append here. And I'm gonna do a, let's do a, do I wanna do a cylinder? Let's do a circle, let's do a circle 3D. And for this, I just want to get rid of the top because it's like this half circle here. So, right. Okay, I'm gonna go to geometry and delete hidden. And then I'm gonna go back to my Z modeler. So B, B, Z, M. And this should be, I'm gonna do Q mesh. 
Or I could do extrude. Let's just do extrude. Extrude is fine. So I'm going to pull this out. So there's that. And then I'm going to I want to inset this as well. So I'm going to do inset polygroup all. And pull this in. Now this inset works a little bit weird. Like I can't go past, I can't really go past that pole up there or else it's doing some very strange things. So there's a couple things I can do. Uh, I could, I think I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Work within the limitations. So there's that and then I'm gonna Q mesh this back in or I wanna extrude this back inwards. So I have this little hole here. Right. Awesome. So I'm going to do this again for my little eyeballs here. So I'm going to say append. Circle. I'll click on that one. And I want this one to be a little bit smaller. Geometry, delete hidden. So I'm going to take, grab my move tool, start to pull this forward, and I'll make it smaller. So like this. Just move these into place. I'm just trying to look at the ratio of the pupil to the eyeball. I feel like, I think that's a little, that's pretty good. So I'm gonna just set this just inside of here and I'm going to extrude this again. So this guy is gonna extrude backwards. And I'll have to reverse this. So anytime you extrude backwards, you have to reverse your mesh. There's my little robot eye now. I'm liking the way that looks. And I might have to do some polygrouping on this as well eventually, but I just want to get this into place and see what it looks like. So I'm going to, so those are my eyes. I'm going to merge this guy down. Okay, and then I'm going to go to my move and put that into place. So I may have to adjust the face as well to get this to fit inside of here. Still way too big. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I'll get lucky. So this part kind of points directly at the middle portion of uh, bring this forward. So this doesn't make any kind of mechanical sense, but uh, it's okay. Oh yeah, really liking how that's looking now. Kind of start to give a character a soul when you start giving it eyes. Okay, so let's mirror and weld this to see the entire idea. Yeah, yeah, that's really, I'm enjoying that. It's pretty good from the side. The only kind of questionable spot is here, but hopefully that'll be all be in shadow. This is dope. Yeah. So we're making progress. It doesn't seem like a lot. I mean, I, we got the we got the leg in, we got the eyes in, we redid the face. The face feels really much much more solid now. How it kind of fixes hooks into to that edge. 
And uh, yeah, that's, oh, it's looking really good. It's looking really nice. All right, so we got our feet. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, I'm actually, so he's got, this guy is kind of like floating out in, in space. And it looks like I also have something, oh, my floor plane is down here. So it's like, why is my floor tent plane down there? That's because I have this other, this backup leg in here. So now this is the interesting thing about ZBrush, and, and this gets students all the time, all the time. Uh, this floor, just as we can see, it's not actual zero. It's not like Maya or Houdini or Blender or anything like that. Like the floor moves with, uh, with whatever's the lowest part of your mesh. So I don't want to do that. So I want that to just always be at world zero. So I believe that's under draw. It's going to be on your floor on this elevation. I'm just going to put that at zero. So if I put that at zero, now this is my actual floor. So my floor and my world grid all line up. So what I can do is I wanna put my actual, this foot on, on this floor. So I'm gonna use my move. I'm going to hold down Alt, recenter this, um, turn off X symmetry and center that. And I wanna turn on all. That should allow me to bring everything up. Oh, it looks like it's only looks like it's only bringing up my foot. Okay, I'll figure out how to do that later. I usually like this is this is probably working with the uh, with the uh, with the, uh, the folders as well. So I just need to be aware that this guy is probably floating either a little bit into the floor, which is fine. Um, so let's turn our leg back up off. I know that my floor is right here and my foot is there. Okay, so we have, this is looking good, that's looking good. Our leg is all in place, very nice. Uh, let's see, what else can we do while we're here? Yeah, we're moving along really well. Let's do... Oh, yeah, this claw. Right, we can start... Actually, i got about 15 minutes left, so let's start working on the claw, and then I'll probably finish that up uh, over, over, the, uh, over the rest of the week. Okay, so let's see. Once again, not a lot of information here in this uh, in this uh, in this view so what I'm thinking is this is a kind of a circular plate kind of like this like this is gonna be a cylinder that's bent into that that's gonna be a circular plate circular plate that's gonna be a small circular plate this is going to be on uh, like a little rotator thing and then this I'm thinking it's gonna be like a almost like a squished sphere with a track on it so these can things can like clamp 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 together like that all right so, how do I want to do? I even want to do that in ZBrush. Seems like a Houdini thing. All right, maybe I'll try it in ZBrush. Stop my knee-jerk reaction to to jumping out into other programs. Okay, so I'm going to, as I did before. So this is this is what it is. This is these are my eyes. I'm gonna put those in my my face. Let's be organized here. Um, all right, so I'm going to start with, you guessed it, a uh, cylinder. So I'm going to, I have, actually have one, two, two cylinders. One here and one here. Actually, three. One, two, three, like snowman. All right, so I'll do that. So let's create, let's insert, append a cylinder 3D. Now, I'm not actually, I don't think I'm actually going to use the cylinder 3D. No, I can. I can. That'll work. I'm just going to drop this down. Actually, 
I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. I'm going to make the, the... Actually, you know what? No. No, no, no. I'm going to do, do this the smart way. And I'm going to come down to initialize. And I'm going to do uh, cylinder Y. So this automatically gives me gives me those uh, those groups. So I'm going to shrink this guy. So as long as my proportions are correct, I'll... Uh, ooh, did I? That's not good. Oh, I have everything that I did. There we go. So I have, be careful when you have this uh, manipulate all button turned on because I, I had manipulate all and I squished my face on accident. Uh, so yeah, okay, so there's my Q cylinder. Drop that down. Hold down Alt and grow that a bit. Okay, so that's this big plate here. I can can edit that. So the other thing I can do is I can do Alt and drag, and that should, or sorry, Control and dra drag, and that will make me a new piece. So that's going to be that front clamp. that and then I'm gonna have to another control and pull and then this is gonna be like this long part in the middle so I'll make that a little bit longer and narrow so I'm just looking at the silhouette of this thing versus the silhouette of this thing I think this guy might need to be a little bit bigger but in this case I think we're okay Cool. So now uh, I'm going to do a, uh, a sphere for this part. I think that'll take us almost to the end. Um, maybe I'll do a time lapse between now and then. I'll show you how I put the rest of this together. What I really want to get to next week is this super fun stuff. So these guys, like the detailing inside of here, uh, this kind of chest plate part, uh, this stuff and this stuff up in here. So like these little wires that come off the brain and kind of like these little plates that go onto the brain. And maybe in the week after that, maybe even get a nice little render. Oh, 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 and these guys, these guys. So that stuff, I think I'm gonna end up doing in Houdini uh, because it's repetitive stuff. And this part, I'll definitely do in Houdini. I might even do the brain in Houdini as well, depending on how much I, I get done. So let's, uh, let's slap in a a sphere in here and uh, we'll call it done. So let's do append again. Sphere 3D. Like that guy. And because the way this looks, this guy looks here, like this little circle is pointing towards us, I think I want to. do that so that sphere is just about the same size as that plate and then maybe I can squish it a little bit oh yeah that'll look, that'll look good that'll look real good Cool. So um, I think that's about it for this stream. So let me go ahead. I'm going to merge this guy down. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this. I'm going to split this to parts because I'm going to work on each one of these pieces individually. So I'll say split, split to parts. So now I have all these individual pieces out here. So what I'll end up doing is I'll put a little track in the middle of this. Maybe I'll even slice off the front of this so I have like this little inset and then I will make the little clamps that come up like this and I'll put it in place so 
this is actually really fun. This is, this is, this is, I'm learning a lot. I'm, well, not, I'm not learning a lot. I am learning a lot. But, uh, it's just some tools that I, that I hadn't used in, a, in, in quite some time. And it's coming along and we're getting, we're almost to the detailing phase. Uh, I'm super happy with this. Uh, it was a little difficult last time, but, uh, it's starting to come together. It's starting to come together. Um, it's a lot faster than, or it's, uh, the, the insanely twisted rabbit that I did before. Uh, it was much faster. Organic forms are much faster to do just in general in CG overall. So um, that's why a lot of people focus on, on, on hard surface because it is, it's more difficult to do. Okay, so I hope you learned some things in this, uh, in this stream. Um, go to uh, cgspectrum.com, 3 d modeling to see our 3D modeling courses or just cgspectrum.com if you're interested in anything CG related. So game design, uh, uh, game programming, compositing, visual effects, modeling, animation, 2D and 3D, uh, concept development, digital painting, digital maps. We do it all. So uh, thank you for hanging out with me on this Sunday and uh, I'll see you on the flip side. Take care of yourselves and stay safe out there. Bye.